ceasefire is due to come into effect in just over half an hour's time. Uh, if it does hold, does it offer an opportunity to get British nationals and others out of Sudan? Well, joining us to discuss that, Ash Alexander Cooper, a former Joint Operational Commander with the British Armed Forces. He worked at Britain's permanent joint headquarters, the hub of UK Organisation for Overseas Military Operations, including foreign evacuations. And he's on the line. Uh, good evening. Good evening. What do you make of this ceasefire announcement? Is it a, an opportunity that can be seized, do you think? Well, it's both encouraging and, and hopefully an opportunity that, that they have to seize. The the history, though, is, as you pointed out to Barbara, you know, there have been three ceasefires in the last week or so that, that have failed almost immediately. So, you know, we have to be realistic, but it is a huge opportunity if it can hold and 72 hours is an incredibly generous window for us uh, and other nations to do what they can to to try and move people as quickly as possible out into safer areas and then hopefully onwards to their home countries. The other news tonight is that there is a small British military reconnaissance team in Port Sudan assessing what the options are. In view of your experience, what kind of um, calculations do you think are happening on the ground right now? Well, there'll be it's not just those people who will be in Port Sudan now or reported to be in Port Sudan who who are key. There'll be many planners around the world who are looking at every option that is possible, you know, land, sea and air. But those on the ground, I'm sure, will be coordinating very closely with other allies and partners who are equally looking at this window of opportunity to see what they can do to extract their citizens. So there'll be a lot of liaison going on between different groups, uh, different nationalities and and trying to leverage, leverage each other's uh, capacity and capabilities uh, as and when opportunities arise. Because platforms, whether they be planes or ships, will be in different parts of the world at different points and, and they'll just have to make, make the best of, of what is available what um, are, during, the, during the window. What are the main challenges facing any evacuation operation at the moment? Well, in the case of Sudan, distance is one of the biggest factors. You know, even if you were um, to manage to get out of Khartoum, it's still a huge distance to get to Port Sudan. I think 800 kilometers or so going north to to Egypt is equally far. And, you know, coming in by air, whether it's helicopters or planes, you know, the capacity is limited. So the challenge there is is, is clear. Um, I think the other concomitant issue is that even though at a high level, a ceasefire may have been negotiated, that doesn't necessarily mean that communication will have been seamless to those fighters at a much lower level and the risk remains so anybody who is involved in an evacuation will clearly be on heightened alert because there is still a risk of being caught in inadvertent crossfire even if you know there is an intent for a ceasefire to hold for the next 72 hours or longer hopefully until now the advice from the british government has been to stay inside was that good advice is that good advice well i think the risk the risk to life the moment you leave your building, the risk of either kidnapping or getting caught in the crossfire is very real. So I don't think it would necessarily help having lots of British nationals um, out and about where the, the risk to life would increase almost certainly. But that's that's not to say that staying in place is also you know a better option for many of them. You know, if they're running out of food, water and supplies or are, may already be injured, then that's equally, you know, clearly concerning and they'll be very distressed wondering what is going to happen and therefore communication you know i think it was pointed out earlier um by your the, the the previous guest there was the doctor um you know she said that the communication has been poor and i think that's the key to all of this is making sure that whatever the plan is agreed by the government and then being uh, with the military then being asked to enact it that communication is clear simple and that people can follow it to make sure that they can get to safety yes i mean the the, the question is being asked why have other countries managed to get some or many of their nationals out and why the British government has only managed to get diplomats out so far. Is there a, a simple answer to that? I'm not sure there's a simple answer. These things are never clean or simple. I mean, it's a very complex dynamic situation. And as I mentioned, you know, a lot of this will depend on where we have assets um, placed at the time. You know, the French and the US have a much larger presence in the region. And I know that there'll be a lot of coordination going on uh, with those allies and partners to to see where um, we can coordinate efforts, um, but I don't think other nations. You know, I believe the Italians today managed to get ninety six people out, um, but the numbers are still pretty small when you think of the thousands that remain across the EU, and there may be even up to sixteen thousand Americans. So the numbers are are pretty large, and it's going to take some time. So my nervousness would be that even with a seventy two hour window, that's still a pretty tight timeline. If if the ceasefire were to fail, to get everybody out that all of our Western nations and others would seek to extract. And briefly, 
every situation, of course, is unique, but will lessons have been learnt from previous evacuations, Afghanistan and, and, and others further in the past? Well, I'm sure militarily there's a lot of lessons will have been learned and many of the commanders will probably have been involved in the Afghan evacuation a number of years ago. I think the, the key thing is that given it's a cross-Whitehall, cross-government um, problem and a solution that needs to be found, the, the coordination and communication between those different government departments to ensure that there's a coherent plan will be critical in, in, as this unfolds in the coming days. Ash Alexander-Cooper, former Joint Operational Commander with British Armed Forces. Thanks very much.